Hi, y'all. Let's talk about Hillary's damned emails and whether or not she should be prosecuted. Uh, I agree with the FBI director. She should not be prosecuted, and no reasonable prosecutor would bring this prosecution. Um, I pick on the left quite a lot, because a lot of stupidity exists on the left, but it also exists on the right. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, it seems like some while ago, the two different parties decided there were certain parts of the Constitution they liked better than the others, and so they would really be concerned about violations of that, and the rest of it not so much. This is the United States of America, not the Soviet Union. We're not a communist bloc. We don't hold secret trials with secret evidence that the public isn't uh, free to see. We hold public trials. The defendant, even if it's a former Secretary of State, is entitled to a, a public trial uh, with the jury of his or her peers, and the evidence has to be laid out in open court. Whenever you're dealing with secrets, like classified information, it is always very tricky. That's why you don't see a lot of prosecutions for violations, uh, you know, for disclosures of, of various kinds of classified information, because very often, in order to get a conviction, you pretty much have to cut off your nose, your eyelids, your lips, your ears, shave off your eyebrows, shave your head, and lop off an arm, Despite, what, to, uh, despite the remainder of your body. So every prosecutor who wants to contemplate bringing one of these prosecutions has to weigh the damage that disclosing certain information in trial is going to do uh, against the egregiousness of the bad conduct of the person under consideration. Now, I'm, I understand like the law and the order type folks. They, they really want law in society. They really want order. They're very strict on that. I understand it. But the, uh, the price for every violation of some law should not and need not be a criminal prosecution. And I'll give you um, an example here. Plane crashes. Very often someone will do something that's probably illegal, and that will in turn lead to a plane somewhere crashing. So obviously what we should do is prosecute those people. We should want to bring them to trial so that way we can deter future kinds of bad conduct of that type. Not necessarily, and indeed in this case would not be particularly wise. When government officials or officials in corporations are afraid of prosecution for answering your questions, you're going to find that people in those professions or in those government offices will be very reluctant to answer your questions because they might be at risk for prosecution. So the FAA, NTSB, is worried about making sure that whatever caused this particular plane crash, is, you know, the problem, whatever it was, is rectified so it doesn't cause the next plane crash that it would have caused absent our finding out what it is and fixing that particular problem. So their goal is not to go out and collect information for the purposes of a criminal prosecution. It's to go out and collect information to remedy the defect that caused the particular crash at issue because there, the, uh, the consequence of not getting cooperation is that the problem could very well become systemic and will cause more planes to fall from the sky, killing scores, you know, hundreds of uh, more people into the future. And so because the consequence of that is so great, they say it's more important to find out what caused it and to nip that in the bud here and save those hundreds upon hundreds of human lives in the future than it is to really make an example out of some bad actor in some company or other. Uh, so too is that true, uh, well for a similar reason, uh, is that true with classified information. So when, um, when you go into court, you know, you have to file, go to the grand jury, seek an indictment, and then that, whatever is presented to the grand jury and goes into the trial, eventually it, it appears in something called the public record. If you want to be able to use that against a criminal defendant in a trial, you have to make certain disclosures to the criminal defendant for that criminal trial. And I'm going to read to you um, from the Classified Information Procedures Act, this is Section 6, uh, Part E. Prohibition on disclosure of classified information by defendant, relief for defendant when the United States opposes disclosure. 1. Whenever the court denies a motion by the United States that it issue an order under subsection C and the United States, file, uh, and the United States files with the court an affidavit of the Attorney General objecting to the disclosure of the classified information at issue, the court shall order that the defendant uh, not disclose or cause the disclosure of su such information. Okay, so if the United States objects, the court can enter an order. Defendant, you may not disclose this. So that's part one, uh, subsection one, subse subsection two. Whenever a defendant is prevented by an order under paragraph one, which we just read, from disclosing or causing the disclosure of such classified information, the court shall dismiss the indictment or information, except that when the court determines that the interests of justice would not be served by dismissal of the indictment or information, 
the court shall order such other action in lieu of dismissing the indictment or information as the court determines is appropriate. Such, such action may include, but need not be limited to, A, dismissing specific counts of the indictment or information, B, finding against the United States on any issue as to which uh, the excluded informa uh, classified information relates, or C, striking or precluding all or part of the testimony of a witness from the government. In other words, uh, this, this is really um, a hard dichotomy here. If you really want this prosecution, and the classified information is related to that prosecution, you have to just accept that it's going to become completely open to the public. Everyone out there is going to be able to read it. It'll be on the internet somewhere. Uh, there'll be court documents. The defendant will have access to it. And, the, and in the case against Hillary Clinton, it's going to be very difficult um, to avoid this because the very issue under consideration will be the, the, uh, the, sub, the parts of her emails that had so-called uh, portion marking for confidential and then other parts of uh, other information that wasn't then classified uh, and was uh, retroactively classified uh, but anyone dealing with that information either uh, would have known or should have known that the information there was classified. Now, if that's the case, in order to say that uh, the secretary did know or should have known that these particular lines of text were in fact classified, you're going to have to present those lines of text. So even if her emails have been hacked, now, uh, because the, the, the parts that they're talking about were, uh, she either did know or should have known uh, because they didn't have a portion marking, you will now be highlighting that for anyone who has those emails so they know exactly what the classified information is, they can look at it, and then perhaps figure out what the source of that information is, whereas if it's three or four lines out of uh, tens of thousands of lines in t uh, tens of thousands of emails, they have to sort through every line individually and try to figure out where did this information come from? Was there a leak here? How did it, you know, all these types of things. So uh, in order to take one of these prosecutions, there are some alternate procedures that uh, clever prosecutors have tried to come up with to get around that whole constitution. And the courts are not sympathetic to that. They really do put it to the, the, the government. If you can invoke that it is a secret all you want. The small price to be paid is that we dismiss the indictment and the person walks free. So there's really no point in bringing that prosecution in the first place unless it is a particularly egregious uh, disclosure, unauthorized disclosure of information, like actual espionage where the person is willfully, wantonly trying to hurt the United States. Here, it's just incompetence. So uh, there is a price to, that uh, Secretary Clinton should pay for her incompetence, for her negligence there, but it's not a criminal prosecution in the same way that some bad decision at a company that led to a, you know, they cut corners and led to a faulty part or whatever that causes planes to crash. Uh, the, the, the solution to that is not um, criminal prosecutions because then you're going to find it hard to get information from those people to fix that. Uh, so more plane crashes are going to happen in, in the interim. So too is it the case here with the secretary, that the price to be paid for her bad conduct, her, her malfeasance, is not a criminal prosecution. It would be uh, being fired, loss of a security clearance, uh, but because she's running for president and security clearances don't matter to presidents because they have access to everything of necessity, it is on the political front that she must pay this price. It needs to be uh, drilled down into relentlessly. And people on the right who, st who can talk about... Uh, wanting to bring a prosecution, you need to give that shit up. This is not a political decision on the part of the FBI director. This is a competent FBI director doing what he should be doing to protect the information that is actually classified, which is to say not going out of his way to make sure that it gets the widest possible uh, distribution throughout the world. Now, of course, one of the things to think about here in the, the logic that, well, no, she did wrong and she is a high-ranking official and we expect more from them, blah, whatever is to think about cancer. If someone has cancer in their little toe, you don't, you don't say, well, you know, there's no point in, in, uh, in treating it because you know, the cancer's already out there, so you might, you might as well just let it spread throughout the body. No, you try to contain the problem. So too would it be true with these emails of hers that may well have been hacked. You want to contain the amount of damage that has been done, which is defeated if you go into court having to show the very text that, uh, that you don't want the world to know is classified for all kinds of reasons. And I've also, uh, just real quick on the Benghazi aftermath, when uh, the president and the secretary were talking about um, various reasons that the attack in Benghazi might well have happened. 
Uh, when you're dealing with classified information, and in particular you have human sources on an you know, the opposing faction somewhere, it's almost an obligation of a public official to lie about uh, this, that, or the other. The problem for the people who aren't in the know of the information is that a lie for your own, protecting your own ass, uh, politically, looks a lot like a lie to protect your source. In fact, if it's done well, you can't tell the difference at all, which is precisely the point about lying to protect the source. You have to weigh in those cases, is it more important to be brutally honest with the American people about something and then, you know, at the risk of losing our human sources because, you know, the only one or two sources of information that this could have come from, once we've disclosed it, the people on the other side will know who our good sources of information are and they will kill them and we will no longer have those sources of information. Or uh, do we go the other way and we just mislead the public to protect our sources so that way we can continue getting them in the long run because we'll save more lives even though in the short term it is absolutely catastrophic, it's absolutely tragic that some people have been killed. It is not an easy world out there when you're dealing with intelligence. And you need leaders who, are, who will lie to your face in order to save thousands of people's lives. It is an obligation of power to be able to uh, protect that which should be protected and that which should be kept secret so that way in the long term you do more good than the, the petty harm of telling a, the occasional lie here or there. And as I mentioned a moment ago, the difficulty is that the lie to protect your own incompetence looks a lot like the lie to protect the lives of your sources who you require in order to be able to do uh, whatever it is you need to be doing in a particular area. And that is not an easy balance to be struck. But that is precisely why we elect people, uh, and we should be electing them based on their judgment. Because they should be able to determine when is it important, when is the public interest in knowing this information more important than the lives of our potential sources. In other words, when is it worth having our sources on the other side slaughtered so that way the American people can be informed about the government versus when should you keep things from the public so that way our sources remain alive on the other side and we continue to get that good information that we need even though it didn't work out particularly well for us in, this, the, in the instant case. Not an easy world to dwell in. Uh, so that's why I've not really had much to say about Benghazi uh, because I'm not in the know and I can't distinguish whether or not this is a lie to protect uh, their incompetence or whether or not it's a, it is a deception for a legitimate reason to protect the lives of sources whom we require in order to be able to fight the various factions in the world we have to fight. All right, have a great day.